What's good, people? It's about that time to randomly relate. Reverse ranch, no hate. So, let me talk briefly about Demetrius Andre. Demetrius Boo Boo Andre got himself in a whole heap of boo boo. <laughs> Why'd you give yourself that name? Or whoever gave you that name. Look, we've been talking about Demetrius Andre for a long time. The bad part about what we've been talking about has constantly been the same things. Him trying to get a significant fight. Something that means something. Something, a fight that people care about. A fight that people are going to remember. A fight that is going to take him to that next level. Now, when people avoid you, you know, it's hard to get those. You know, those fights. But, look, when he and Billy Joe Saunders were going back and forth, it was just weird because they would constantly yell, send the contract, sign the contract, I want this fight, and then nothing happens. Now, we know Billy Joe popped dirty in one of his fights, you know, well, when they were supposedly going to fight. And I say allegedly, you know, supposedly because, you know, I'm used to all the talking and nothing happening. Okay. Um, the problem right now for Demetrius Andre, to be honest with you, is this. He was supposed to fight Zach Parker the first time. They were offering him like a million, a million point five or something or whatever it was going to be. And I guess he feels like, he feels like he's worth more than that. Okay? The problem now too is he's a free agent. And pretty much they offered him, I think like 180 something thousand, I forget the exact number, like 180 thousand I'll just say 180,000 plus to fight Zach Parker. He pulls out of the fight again. It's probably because now he's like, wait a minute. They went from a million to 180,000. Um, 80, you know. So I haven't really heard him speak. You know, I've heard him saying things like he has, you know, things going on outside of boxing. So, like, in other words, financially, he's good. He's not worried about it. But at the same time, it's like, no, you don't want to go through a grueling training camp and have to deal with this just to fight a lesser opponent, okay? Or for a little bit of money, okay? Um, I get you, but to a certain degree. I think Demetrius Andre wasted a lot of time in his career trying to get a fight with Charlo, trying to get a fight with Canelo instead of just staying active and staying busy. Because when you look at a guy's resume, okay, and you see who's who on that resume, those wins and losses don't come with instructions. They don't come with information, okay? It's just basically, this is who he fought. It doesn't come with who ducked him, who didn't want to fight him, who he ducked and didn't want to fight. It doesn't come like that. Demetrius Andre is 34 now. I think Demetrius Andre is pretty much in the doghouse. Now, for you, and, and, and he doesn't even have a belt anymore. Now, if you couldn't get fights you wanted as a champion, then basically, just like Jamal Charlo saying there's no value in fighting you in um, Demetrius Andre, well, there's a lot of truth to that now. And then, too, you got to understand, right? When you're talking pound for pound list, does Demetrius Andre name ever come up? It doesn't. So even for those who think that he should be on the pound for pound list, the way boxing works, real simple. If you're not a draw, then they don't see value in you either. So my thing is like, we know Anthony Durrell is getting ready to fight Um Caleb Plant. If he can get the winner of that fight, or if he can get into a fight with David Benavidez, not sure how much money he get, how much value he brings to that fight with either guy, because he's not a big star. But at the same time, if he can't get fights like that, Let's say he fights some tough up-and-coming guy that's not really well-known. Like Newman, Roy Jones guy. Guy can fight, but he's just not well-known yet. 
even if he wins, people will say Demetrius Andre shouldn't even be in there with a guy like that because the, I mean nobody knows the guy yet. You understand? So he's right now in a position where if he can't get those fights, what like what is he actually going to do? He's going to end up doing what he should have been doing: staying active, staying busy, racking up wins. You understand? That's what he that's what he should have been doing. And at 34 years old, you don't want to work harder. You want to work smarter. That's what most fighters, people in general in life do. The thing is, 34 is young. But in boxing, it's not, it's not that young. Simply depend, It depends on the fighter's lifespan as a fighter. Because just say, for example, let's say he's, he's 34. So if he can go to 44, then you can say, well, damn, he fought 10 more years on elite level. So, okay, he was able to do something that a lot of fighters can't do. That's just go past what is considered prime years and, and, and still take it, you know, fight at that, at, at that elite level, you know, as he, as he got older, you know, because by 44, people would be like, nah, you shouldn't be in the ring. We just saw, you know, Luis Ortiz in the ring at 43. Bernard Hopkins did it, you know, Foreman did it. So it's not like it's impossible. It's been done. Holyfield done it, has done it. But just saying, for Demetrius Andre, you got to blame him for the shit that he did as well. Pulling out of fights, you know, not staying as busy as he should have been. You can't, even if you got things going on outside of boxing, that's all fine. But at the same time, you can't complain about your position if you have done nothing to put yourself in a better position. And I look at Charlo in a similar way. Because for Charlo, he's 33. Well, Charlo needs to try to get in negotiations to fight Triple G. He needs to try to unify his division. Because at least if he does that, you know, and he's fighting the top guys, well, even if they're not well-known, listen, Triple G was beating guys, right, that wasn't well-known, and he still got praise for it. So at the same time, because so especially if he doesn't want to go to 168. Because if he does go to 168, then what's your plan there? You're not going to go all the way up just so you can fight Plant and then fight Benavidez and, and, and then what? Like, are you trying to retire, <laughs> you know, after that? Are you going to continue to fight? Then, then what are you going to do? Because everybody wants to have some type of belt in order to have bargaining chips and to be that guy and to try to unify. I don't know what Charlo's plans are. But, you know, these guys are all... They're not in their prime. They're not in their young. They're, they're in, in their you know prime in terms of their, their age anymore. So these guys, like you know, their physical prime, they still can you know fight and all whatever. But just say, time is not on their side. Bottom line, okay, time is not on their side. That's the one thing that they definitely need to pay attention to. So I don't know, and it's just sad, man, because Demetrius Andre is a solid fighter, and I mean when you see guys being interviewed at other fights after somebody else's fight. Years go by, and they're still talking about fighting that same fighter, those same fighters, and then the fights just don't happen. In the meantime, you need to be racking up wins. And, you know, that's how you make your money as a fighter. You got to fight. All this shit on the sidelines waiting, waiting, trying to strategically do whatever. We've seen it. It hurt Gary Russell. Gary Russell was the, the, the longest reigning champion in boxing. And lost the title. And basically, nobody was talking about him. The most talk that we heard about Gary Russell was when he was barking and talking all this trash about fighters that's two and three weight classes up from him. And he want to fight Terrence Crawford. He want to fight Devin Haney. He want to fight Tank Davis and all this. And I, I punched Terrence Crawford in the face. And he didn't do nothing. All this shit. That's the most you heard people talk about Gary Russell. And Gary Russell can fight. And the only time you heard that kind of talk about Gary Russell, like his name being mentioned so much, was when he lost to Lomachenko. In between that, people acknowledge he is a good fighter. He's a solid fighter, but he's not a draw. And his name just doesn't come up. And again, he's talking about he's going to come back and be champ of the world again. Maybe, maybe not. But at the same time, Tom is not on his side either. So I think Demetrius Andre has put himself in a position where he helped put himself in a, in a, in a lousy position because... You have to take the fights that you can get. When you can't get the fights that you want, there's no reason for you to sell. Look at look at Andre Ward. 
It's like the most you remember about Andre Ward overall is the Super Six, him fighting Chad Dawson, and then him fighting Kovalev. It's not a lot of in between. Like you, I mean, if you was really watching Andre Ward like that, then you might remember more than than, than just the average person that you know. But overall, those are the moments you remember about him being in that Super Six. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and, and 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 you know, him fighting Kovalev, man, and fighting Chad Dawson. And a lot of people probably don't really remember he fought Chad Dawson, but it's like, and, and Chad was supposed to be that guy. That 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 type of thing. What I'm saying is, look at how fast it was over. He decided to retire, and if you was watching him as a light heavyweight, you can see he had a long what three year layoff, and you could see he wasn't the same fighter when he came back. You compare that version that fought Kovalev compared to the Super Six Andre Ward. If your last memories of Andre Ward was against Kovalev, like that's what you remember more recently, go back and watch him as a middleweight and you'll see. Like, no, this dude really could fight. He was way better at 160 than he was at 175. Wasn't the same guy. So him retiring was, was the best thing for him because to be honest with you, once you don't, you know, you don't feel right, you feel like I need to retire. It's time to just do it. And the worst thing that can happen to you is if you come back Especially if it's the type of thing where you just start missing boxing all of a sudden. Maybe there's other guys that come up. Somebody might remind you of you. Whatever it may be. And you come back and then get embarrassed. You know, Sugar Ray Camacho type shit. Once it's done, it's done. Everybody can't do what George Foreman did. How many people have done it? So, that's the whole thing. Um, I don't know. We just see what happens with Demetrius Andre, but man, it's like a very dark cloud hanging over Demetrius Andre's head right now, man. And and so the payday that he was trying to get, hey, we get it. But when you see that it's difficult to get fights, you have to fight. You have to be in there. You have to you have to get attention. You have to, you have you have to go in there and handle that business. You can't like for, for you to make the move that you made and then sit back and let all these years, these precious years out of your life go. Where did it get you? And just think, for you to be offered a million dollars to fight a guy, Zach Parker, and then all of a sudden you turn that down just to end up getting offered 180000 to fight the same guy? And he turned it down. So, yeah, I mean, he needs a big name. He, he needs a big name. Otherwise, like I said, he's going to, have to do at 34 what he should have been doing years ago, which is just staying consistent, fighting. And when I say fighting, whoever you can get, I don't mean I don't mean just anybody, but I mean you take who's available. Like in other words, if you can't get Charlo, but let's say you can get Chris Eubanks Jr. You know what I'm saying? Like something like that. Like not, or if you can't get Benavidez, but you can get you know Liam Smith is some. You need somebody that has some type of credibility. And that's pretty much what's been eluding him is that he's been fighting. Not that he hasn't fought some good fighters, just the fact that he's never been able to get to that next level. And again, even though he was a champ at 160, everybody was talking Earl Spence, Terrence Crawford, you know, Tank Davis, you know what I mean? The Porters, the, the Thurman, L. nobody was really talking about Demetrius Andre. And that's real talk. Anyway, talk to me in the comment section. Never fall in love with lies. Remember the truth brings hate out of people. And I will catch y'all on the next video.